So a new era of Doctor Who always brings lots of new things with it, and RTD2 has been no exception. We've had a new TARDIS, which I've discussed in much detail in a previous video, new Sonic, new old Doctor as well, new old head writer slash showrunner, and also a new title sequence and arrangement of the theme tune. Now, I have already done a video about the theme tune because that was premiered, obviously, a couple of months ago now at that concert down in Cardiff. But we have now got both the final mix and the visuals that go with it. We have the opening titles as a package, and that is something that I did want to kind of give my thoughts on in this video, really, uh, because, yeah, I have some thoughts, some mixed thoughts, some positive, some less positive. So first of all, let's talk about the final mix of the theme tune, because I discussed the sort of concert performance, obviously, when that happened on the channel. I was feeling a little bit mixed towards that. I think certainly now I'm feeling a lot more positive towards it. I think it's really grown on me. Uh, there are particular parts, and to be fair, you, know, you couldn't really necessarily hear them picked out in the performance version, but in the final mix now, you know, the piano parts are very prominent. These final little flourishes. The orchestra flourishes as well, like the little string bits, for instance, and the bits of choir as well that kind of put in there, particularly at the end, where it's kind of there alongside the synth, the final kind of bit of the melody. It just sounds fantastic. Fantastic. And I think that the fanfare at the start as well, again, has grown on me. You know, I've not always loved the fanfares that Murray's done. He's done a few different versions, a few kind of different intro sections for the theme. But I do think this is the best. I think it's the one that works the best and gets you most excited. And the whole thing does have a very sort of very strong pulse and boom, 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 all that kind of, you know, exciting kind of punchiness to it, which I think works really well, particularly for this era, the Disney era, the streaming era, and also for the anniversary as well. You know, it matches that scale and the importance of the occasion, say. And as we start to hear it more in like behind the scenes videos or trailers or whatever, in the lead up to the Star Beast, it was getting me excited for this new era of Doctor Who. And I think that is all you can ask for from a theme, you know, for it to get you excited for the new episode. But how does it work in the episodes themselves as part of the opening titles? Well, here my feelings are a little bit more mixed. You know, I think overall it still works, it still gets you excited, but there, there are some strange things going on here, and I've seen other people say this as well. It kind of feels like the version of the theme, and certainly that we heard in the concert, and then in these other videos and stuff as well, in the lead up to the Star Beast, that final mix seems to have been cut down somehow, as if pieces of it have been kind of stitched together. And that's certainly what it sounds like to me. It sounds like this version that we get in the opening titles isn't as long as it's meant to be, and that's a bit of a mystery. I'm not quite sure why that is, whether it's just like a timing reason, you know, whether the BBC or Disney kind of demanded that it was that way. And I think it's a similar story with the titles themselves, with the actual visuals, because again, the way this has been cut together does feel a little bit off. It feels like the sequence has been cut down, like it was meant to be longer, like it was longer, and there's like a, a longer version that exists somewhere, but for whatever reason, cuts had to be made. You know, there are certain parts of this that, that don't seem to sync up with the theme tune and vice versa. that The two things, you know, they match closely enough, but they don't seem to be sort of wedded together in the way that you might want them to be. But that aside, you know, in terms of the visuals themselves and what I think of them, just like as a standalone thing, um, I think kind of going into the Star Beast, I said in another video that I had very few expectations or predictions for the titles. I didn't really know what to expect from them because they hadn't been talked about much in advance. We hadn't had any like pre-publicity or anything about them. We didn't know who would be making them or, or anything like that or what kind of inspiration would be for them. So literally when they kind of started up on Saturday, it was a kind of a completely kind of going in blind for me. I had no idea what to expect. I think my first thoughts, n number one probably was the colour of it. You know, very colourful, probably the most colourful title sequence we've had yet. And also as well, it kind of put me in the mind of the class intro, which I think other people have said. Um, it's not going to be something that most people will have picked up on. Certainly not something that most people will have wanted to pick up on or be reminded of. But I suppose that does actually figure, because class was also kind of presenting itself as a show for the streaming era, and whether or not it kind of found its feet there, and maybe not so much. But yeah, certainly with Doctor Who now, it's a similar sort of story. In fact, if you think about it in that sense, then the class intro is actually like the third most recent title sequence we've had across the Hooniverse, because obviously we've had this as number one, the Jodie one is number two, and yeah, 2016 class, that was the third most recent, so there you go. But yes, you know, all joking aside, I think the class parallels aren't too surprising when you think about it. I think, you know, going into this, if I was expecting anything, it was something that is 
modern and feels like it's been made for the streaming audience. And, you know, quite often with shows like that, certainly with, with the class intro or maybe other Bad Wolf shows or other kind of streaming shows, you know, from what I've seen, and I'm not an expert, but from what I have seen, you know, that they do kind of incorporate lots of visuals, you know, more visuals than a Doctor Who title sequence would traditionally have. You know, usually it's just kind of one uncut sequence kind of going through space following the TARDIS, and what we get here is something quite different. I mean, if any footage has been cut from this sequence, that's obviously one thing, but there are some deliberate cuts in here too, some cuts from one shot to the other. It's not just an uncut, smooth sequence where everything follows on. You know, for the first time, basically, in Doctor Who history, we have got cuts in the title sequence. You know, we are still following the TARDIS, but we cut to different angles of the TARDIS as it flies through space. We even have, like, a little zoom on it as well, which mm, I'm not too sure how I feel about that. But I think, overall, that is one of the things that kind of makes it feel a little bit more modern and one of those things that isn't surprising really in terms of it being like a streaming show. I mean the TARDIS is a welcome addition, you know it's been absent from the title sequence for the past five years, it's appeared in almost every Doctor Who title sequence, obviously it wasn't in the Jodie Chimmel one, but yeah it's great to have it back. I think I was kind of expecting maybe more visual elements in this perhaps, a bit like in the class intro where you get shots of the characters or significant props and bits and pieces from the series, or maybe like something like Sherlock as well, I mean obviously that's a bit older now, but that sort of idea where visuals from the show, aside from the TARDIS, are actually incorporated into the sequence as well, because that seems to be something, you know, in modern shows that tends to happen quite a lot these days. And there is a little bit of that in this, to be fair, you know, kind of other planets or other galaxies or like wormholes to other worlds, and different coloured time vortexes as well, like very blue ones, very purple ones pinky sort of ones as well. So I think the kind of, the way that that has been expanded is quite nice. Although I think overall, I can't help but feel that maybe they should have pushed out a little bit further and maybe incorporated more elements or maybe just kind of increase the scope of it. Because while there are some shots that obviously couldn't have been done like 18 years ago with, with series one or whatever for the first Russell era, there are also some shots, kind of more traditional ones, of the TARDIS kind of just sort of zooming through space, where it does feel a little bit like it could have been from a previous era. It feels like a little bit of a backwards step, perhaps, you know, something that could have been taken from the original Russell era or the Moffat era or from the class intro. I think it works well enough for what it is, and I certainly like the concept behind it. I just kind of wish they'd gone a little bit further with it, maybe. And perhaps if this was cut down, maybe there are other parts of it and it would have made more sense in its kind of uncut form. Speaking of things that don't quite make sense, we have the logo. The diamond logo, obviously, uh, brought back for the 60th anniversary and for the new Russell era, making its return to the show and to the title sequence for the first time in, in many decades. And yeah, this is a bit underwhelming. Well, more than a bit. Basically, they have just got like, the original Photoshop or PNG file of that logo that's been using all the merchandise and stuff. And they've literally just dropped that in, that kind of render, that initial render of it. There's no sort of new rendering on this, no new effects or like 3D elements. It's literally just that original file, like a kind of 2D cutout of a 3D logo, and it, it just doesn't work. And that is one thing that I will stand by, I'm afraid. I just don't like how this looks. It looks naff, it looks cheap. The concept behind it, you know, great, but why couldn't they have gone back to that original logo file and properly sort of imported it in and made a new version of it that has some animated elements and some proper shine to it, proper 3D elements, you know, like a, an actual proper 3D file rather than this just flat cutout of it. It looks so out of place and I really don't understand why this has happened. Likewise, with the massive BBC logo above it, uh, that just looks really, really strange. It should be a lot smaller than that, unless there's some kind of stipulation from the BBC that it has to be that size. But really, you know, I just don't know with this. I think, you know, if we go back to the original video, the little clip that went round when they first announced this logo was coming back, that was great. It looked fantastic. The logo was animated and it looked properly nice and shiny and integrated into the stuff around it. And the BBC logo as well was a lot smaller. It just worked better. And to have gone from that to this, um, I mean, it's just a massive glowdown, really. I mean, there is like the outline of the, of the Who that actually kind of lingers around once the logo itself has gone. That's really nice. And I just wish there was more stuff like that with the logo because at the moment it feels like a missed opportunity. 
And it's a similar story with the title caption for the episode as well, with the title and the writers and all that sort of stuff on it. You know, again, it's just like 2D, white, flat text with nothing really to kind of make it stand out, no kind of babbling or embossing or anything like that, and no 3D elements to it. And I certainly wouldn't want it to be too flashy or too extravagant, because that would look silly and make it kind of distract from the vortex behind it. But again, I just feel like, you know, come on with this. It could look better than it does. So yes, you know, overall with these new titles, a bit of a mixed bag, really. You know, I'm not as enamored by them as I was like with the Jody titles, for instance. Maybe over time they will grow on me a little bit more, but at the moment it just can't help but feel like a bit of a work in progress, both in terms of some of the elements and the way it's been cut together as well, and the way that the visuals and the music don't quite sync together as perfectly as they maybe should do. Um, there are some things there that can be fixed, you know, going forward, and hopefully, you know, for Christmas or for next year's series, there will be some changes made, you know, when Shooter takes over. But yeah, as things stand at the moment, certainly not my favourite title sequence ever. It's nice enough, it does its job, it's okay, but I wanted to be really blown away by it, and sadly that's just not happened. But what do you think of this new title sequence? Do you love it? Do you hate it? Do you agree with me? Disagree with me? Do you feel the same way about the logo and the text and some parts not quite feeling as, as finished and as polished as they should do? Whatever the case, please make your thoughts known down in the comments below. If you have enjoyed this video, please do leave a like and subscribe to the channel if you're new for more stuff like this in the future. But otherwise, until the next one, thank you so much for watching and goodbye for now.